weather weenies. The socials are a buzz about the cold that's coming in January. I've told you this is coming. Everyone's, I don't want to say they're blowing it out of proportion. There's a little bit of misinformation out there. So let's just go ahead and rather than address all the bad, let's talk about what's going to be happening and why. Is Florida going to get a blizzard? No, they're not. Sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and call that right now. Is it going to get cold? Yeah. Do they have the potential to see some below freezing temperatures from Texas to Florida and through a whole bunch of southeastern locations in like the second week of January? Yeah. So I've been showing you this for a long time. And so you guys see that like we know the cold air is coming. We've been talking about this. Climate Prediction Center showing generally colder temperatures throughout. Oh, my God. A lot of the country, unless you're in the west or southwest or in the United States. That's for January 4th through 8th. So that really covers kind of like the first week. And as we get into the second week here, we see, yeah, there's there's a big shift. Things are going to get kind of semantics or not, whether this is actually a polar vortex or not. See, what happens is the polar vortex is one of the jets, kind of like the streams uh, that we have down here, that happens up at the Arctic and it spins really tightly, almost like a spinning top. And what happens is every once in a while, the top slows down and it starts to wobble um, and the cold air can spill from the Arctic down here. Now we see that that's gonna happen and it's gonna come down through at least Canada. Is it going to be a true polar vortex that makes its way all the way down to the United States? That is to be determined, and I'm, I'm not willing to put anything on that quite yet. Um, but it is going to be getting cold. So let's take a look at the GFS temperatures. This, like, tealy color is, like, minus 40. But what I want you to look at is the line of where, like, the green-blue is. That's the freezing line. That's 0C or uh, 32 Fahrenheit. And so I just want you to watch as we play through, sorry if I can computer, um, play through, okay, cold air comes down, cold air comes down, but you start to see those teals coming down through Canada. Okay, here we go. Stuff starting to work its way south. This is already one week out. This is next Monday the 6th, okay? It's after that that we're starting to see some signals of that cold air really dropping pretty far down, making its way at some points down into Florida. And I'm going to go ahead and back up a little bit here so you can see. I mean, we definitely are talking about cold temperatures. In at Saturday, January 11th, almost two weeks away, the freezing line does make its way into Texas, through Louisiana, through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, down through Florida. Confidence is high that it's going to get cold, but we can't be calling blizzards in Florida and crazy stuff like that. So that's where we know the freezing line is. But let's see where it's supposed to get a lot colder than normal. This graphic shows temperature anomaly, basically like the deviations from normal. So we go along, okay, it's fine. A little bit of cool air in the Northeast. All right, even seeing some cool air sinking down here. This is about 10 degrees colder than normal that we're gonna be seeing rolling through here this weekend. That's fine, okay, cool. We know it's gonna be getting cold. Uh, then we start to see the cold air start to pull in down through here. And once again, remember how much how far out we are. Now this, this is where things get interesting. Once again, we're looking at January 10th and 11th. This is way far out. This sliver here that you're going to see in the Appalachians, if that is like 25 degrees colder than normal, all of these pinks are 20. This dark purple um, is about 15 degrees colder than normal. And anywhere you see this dark blue is 10 degrees colder than normal. So it's, it's about to get cold. The thing about these Arctic air masses is they are incredibly cold and they're also incredibly dry. When the air gets that cold, it just can't hold a lot of moisture. So when you get this really, really cold air with it, you don't get like big snowmakers with it. So right here around the 6th, and once again, we're going to keep an eye at this 540 line. It's the blue dotted one above the red one. This kind of helps you know where freezing temperatures will be. You see the rain snow line for this low that's going to be coming through around Monday the 6th. It's pretty low. Um, you know, that, that's pretty far south. And so that's kind of the first batch of cold air that's going to be coming, spilling through here. That dries things out. Um, you see some little disturbances go off to the side here, but once again, it's just going to be too darn cold. That 4, 540 line really drops, and that is just very dry, very cold, very stable air associated with that. So if it gets super cold, we're not looking at any snow that's going to really be coming with it other than some flurries. And I will correct to say that's by like my New England standards, right? So it could even, you can get like an inch of snow. And I realize how disastrous that is for most places south of the Mason-Dixon. So that cold is definitely story number one. The other thing in New England we've been looking at is the low that's going to be passing through about a week from now. And that's definitely evolving and isn't looking as great, but it could be a slight shot of snow for New England. So here's the crap that cleared out of here this morning. Okay, that's fine. Move along. We get our little bit of a break on Tuesday. Here's the next thing that moves through on Wednesday. Could be more snow than what we had originally thought. I thought it was going to be all of a rain soaker. So we'll keep an eye on that. I'll give an update on tomorrow on what that's going to look like. 
And then as we wait for the next thing to come in, there's something that blooms off the coast, but that's too late. Here's the next disturbance that we see move in. And this is already Monday. So the timing of this has already been pushed back substantially. And we know that this is going to be on the leading edge of some cold air that comes in. Not a lot of moisture with this. So um, that big, big weekend snowfall that I was definitely hoping for. It doesn't look like it's going to quite materialize, but we're going to keep an eye on it. As for the temperature anomalies for New England, so seeing next Sunday, you know, about a week out, definitely a little colder, maybe 10 degrees colder than it should be this time of year. So that's going to be giving us some, definitely some chilly temperatures. But look, that cold air really moves into the south. We see a little bit of it up here where we're going to have maybe 15 or 20 degrees colder than normal. But this is going to spin around. Most of it goes to our south, and it's just going to be hard to say where it goes. So as this cold air moves through almost two whole weeks from now, um, just to give you an idea of what temperatures may look like. There's going to be a lot of refinement needed here in the next uh, week and a half for sure. But yes, it could get below freezing through a lot of Florida, through the entire southeastern United States, through parts of Texas. And you can see we're looking at single digits here through um, through the upper Midwest, all right, where it's really going to get cold. We're looking at North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. These guys are used to it. Yes, it could definitely be very much below zero. We're looking at temperatures in maybe the teens or single digits up here in New England. So it's definitely a cold shot, but this isn't a minus 35 everybody panic type of thing. At least not yet. Let's give the models a little bit of time. There's still a lot of uncertainty here. We know the cold is coming, but being able to say the specifics of the magnitude, the timing and the exact locations is just too darn early for anybody to be talking about.